Welcome back. Yes, it's Debating Spirit Unleashed here at the Pro Wrestling Melee Game Show. Yes, I'm wearing the same thing because obviously, why would we not record all of these back to back to back to back? Uh, but we space them out just so that, you know, you have more content to watch throughout the week. And we have another great contest today. Pitting. Yes, this gentleman is 0-2 in the block, but he's always a winner in our hearts. It's the SRG LFF Intergalactic Champion, the big guy colliding with <laughs> colliding with Pro Wrestling Melee's number one contender to our game show championship. It's Curtain Jerk Facts. Gentlemen, are you ready? Let's do it, baby. Born ready. Okay, we will be starting with Curtain Jerk Facts here. Your question, what is the greatest clusterfuck match of the 21st century so far? Well, it is a question that I feel answers itself because in April of 2019, there was a match that was literally called the greatest clusterfuck. It was at Joey Janela Spring Break 3, and it was magnificent. I mean, you had it starting with Necro Butcher and Nick Gage, and then Schlack came in. That's right. It was a deathmatch Royal Rumble clusterfuck. There was every weapon imaginable. There were hypodermic thedals. There were tables. There were doors. There was barbed wire. There was Logan Stunt. There was Hornswoggle. There was uh, Sexy Eddie. Actually, you know what? I'm going to even say that Ron Funches, who really should become the Joe Rogan of GCW, said the following. He said that this was classy nudity, nudity and that sometimes in real pro wrestling, you're going to see a cock because Sexy Eddie literally was naked and did a moonsault in a crowded ring full of people. And it also, this will remain the greatest clusterfuck because this, think about that, April 2019, it's before the dawn of AEW, it's it's before the softening of GCW, it was the last of its kind, it is the greatest clusterfuck, and like all great clusterfucks, it ended with a, a large faction of women took over, dominated, that's not how necessarily how every clusterfuck ends, but... They get revenge on Joey Janela, the godfather of the clusterfuck match. And it ends without a winner. It literally, they just get their revenge on Janela and it cut to black. What a clusterfuck. Very seldom do I regret writing a question. <laughs> this question, I already regret writing it. Uh, big guy, what is your answer? Okay, my answer is... April 26 of 2000. This clusterfuck match was the doom that basically ended WCW. And that was DDP and David Arquette versus Jeff Jarrett and Eric Bischoff. And if no if you don't know out there folks, this is one David Arquette became WCW champion. And as I said, this is basically the match that broke the camel's back and put the thumbnail in WCW for good. And that is why it got my clusterfuck match. Okay. Curtain jerk facts. Why is your opponent wrong here on taking that stance? Well, I mean, I think he's wrong because... The, the question was, what's the greatest clusterfuck? If the question was, what was the worst clusterfuck? Or maybe even the biggest cluster of a fuck, I could see his argument, maybe. But it was terrible. <laughs> Does anyone want to use the words David Arquette, WCW champion, and the word greatest in the same sentence? It just doesn't make sense. Whereas me, we're talking about an answer that I have Teddy Hart coming out with his cat into the ring with 20 guys in it. I'm talking about Shad Gaspard in one of his last wrestling appearances on with National Exposure. I'm talking about something that the word great with a capital G makes sense. David Arquette and Eric Bischoff in a match is not on anybody's barometer of greatness. Hmm. Big guy, what is your rebuttal? Why Why is uh, your opponent's answer wrong? My opponent's answer is wrong because I didn't use a match that had greatest already in it. And I used a match. <laughs> I used a match that was a clusterfuck that doomed a company and basically ended it for good. 
and tarnished the WCW championship forever. Oh, that was a good you you were really far behind on that one, but that was a good rebuttal. <clears throat> and I guess greatest is I wrote that too open ended because greatest could be horrible or he gave you credit. Oh. Okay. In fairness, judging on Kurt Angle's three eyes, which I always do, intensity, integrity, and intelligence, you both had intelligence. You both kept true to your answers, so there was a lot of integrity there. And while I hate the answer, only one of you had intensity in arguing it, and he's very good at that. He's very good at arguing points that I'm not a fan of, but because he has the intensity, I have to honor his answers. Kurt and Jerk Facts. Congratulations. I See, he even knew I was talking about him because he unmuted himself. Congratulations on picking up that win. I mean, I, I play my game. I don't play to the judges. You know, <laughs> I play my game, and I'm going to be – and that's integrity. By the I'm way. just here to look good. That's integrity. I think we needed a professor in this uh, block because what is the definition of clusterfuck? So, uh, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Right. You know, the funny thing right. was current jerk facts <laughs> jumped into this block swapping with his stable mate, Professor Tom. So we, 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 everyone, we hope you enjoyed this debate. It was a clusterfuck of a debate, but it was fun. And that's the whole point. It's fun. We're doing this for charity. And so it makes it all and worthwhile. And like in my answer, and unlike my opponents, a good clusterfuck should actually be fun. Um, sure, sure, yeah, let's go with that. We're gonna sure, leave on a high. Sure, a good clusterfuck, man. Th that that might be a debate unto itself. <laughs> Clusterfucks, good or bad. Everyone, we'll see you for the next contest. Take care. <laughs>